Let me show you how to evoke the relaxation response. So if you will, just close your eyes and relax all your muscles, starting with your feet, your calves, your thighs. Shrug your shoulders around. Blow your head and neck around. Great. Wonderful. Now sit without movement and just focus on your breathing. But breathe oh so slowly. Each time your breath is coming out, say silently to yourself the word calm. And you're going to find all sorts of other thoughts coming to mind. Those thoughts are natural. They should be expected. But when they occur, don't be upset, but simply say, oh well, and passively come back to the word calm. On each out breath, calm. And as the other thoughts come to mind, just oh well, and back to calm. This is a simple, basic form of meditation. The sensors confirmed what I was beginning to feel, that I was more relaxed. Now just slowly, slowly open your eyes. How was that? It's nice. You got into it nicely. What did the physiologic uh, changes show? I think the most dramatic one was um, your muscle tension, measured right here. Before it was so high, it was off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and after about a minute and a half, it, it came down quite nicely. This is how you can use the mind to affect the stresses of the body. And to the extent that any disorder is caused or made worse by stress, to that extent, we can use this as a therapy. Is there a difference between um, what you might call chronic stress and, and momentary stress? I mean, is, is, it, is it good for you to, to have short bursts of stress that you can handle? The more the stress, the more efficient you are, the more um, uh, productive you are, but to a point. Mm -hmm. When it gets too chronic, and then performance and efficiency start dropping off, mm -hmm. and that's what most people are experiencing. John Goddard is one of the beneficiaries of Benson's relaxation therapy. Once a victim of panic attacks, depression, and high blood pressure, He's now mentally stable and off his blood pressure medication. He says his daily meditation is responsible. It's given me my life back. I was uh, hiding in my house for 12 years. I was so frightened. And now I'm out in the world. I'm actually working again. It's just so fantastic. This is northern India, the foothills of the Himalayas, and the year is 1981. These scenes were filmed on visits led by Herbert Benson to track down experts in Tumo Yoga. It's practiced by Tibetan monks who had followed the Dalai Lama here when he was exiled. Benson, knowing of the Dalai Lama's reputation for openness, got permission to investigate. For, for years, the, the practice of Tumo has been a secret within uh, Tibetan Buddhist practice. And you allowed a, um, the West to have studies of this for the first time. Well, why is that? <laughs> yes, um, as you mentioned, uh, this is a practice usually regarded as a secret doctrine and also um, very a private thing. But I feel no, as usually, is, I believe and also is explained to people that we are is believing or um, emphasis on, on reasons and facts. If it's something true, something fact, then the, uh, the investigation taken through or meditation and investigation taken through instrument may reach the same point. The Tumo meditation experts live alone in unheated stone huts at high altitude. Benson was able to bring some into town for tests. He was astonished to learn what they were capable of. What their monks can do in Tumo yoga 
is essentially naked in midwinter with four, in 40 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, take a sheet measuring six by three feet, dip it in icy water, wrap themselves in that sheet. You and I will go into uncontrollable shivering and perhaps even die. They can get that sheet steaming within three to five minutes. We've been studying that for 20 years. Benson brought back now famous film of the Tumo monks drying their ice cold sheets. For them, it's of course an essential religious ritual designed to create a fire which burns away all traces of improper thinking. For Benson, it was simply astonishing. And in fact, he found with his tests that monks could at will raise the temperature of their extremities, fingers and toes, by as much as 15 degrees. At the same time, they don't increase their heart rates, he found. So somehow they must be deliberately opening up their blood vessels, increasing the flow. I'm no Tibetan monk, but after my relaxation session, the idea of warming yourself up didn't sound out of the question to me. Three quarters of the way through, trying to uh, repeat the word calm, I felt warmer. Exactly, that's a common response. You see, the stress hormones lead to vasoconstriction. That's just what we were measuring, muscle tension. When you evoke the relaxation response that way, what then occurred, that hormone was counteracted and that led to a warming of the skin. But how exactly are the stress hormones counteracted? Usually, the fight-or-flight stress response is beyond our conscious control. It just starts and stops automatically. Somehow, meditators tap into the part of the brain that controls the switches. And you don't have to be a Tibetan monk to do it. 